In this tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through some of the basics of Maya fluid effects. So, I'll just start off by disabling my grid, going to the fluids tab, and in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the basics of um, 2D fluids and the emitter properties. So, basically, you can go to fluids and click on that one there, which will create a 2D fluid container with an emitter or you can go to fluid effects create 2d container then add your emitter through here I'm just gonna add the default one now and go to my front view okay so we have two things here on the screen this little dot in the center and this large square here this dot um, this dot in the center here is the emitter so this is what's going to be producing the fluids and pretty much just determines where they start and some basic properties of the emitter. This here is the container so basically everything that's emitted cannot leave this container this is the space that holds holds everything there. So first off I'm just going to walk you through some of the basic fluid attributes. Once if you can if you select your fluid emitter and you go to side panel here you'll see fluid attributes um, at the moment we've got density, heat, fuel, fluid drop off, emit fluid color, fluid color and jitter. So I'm just going to walk you through and tell you what each one does. Basically the density defines how much fluid is actually going to get pumped out every second. The heat pumps out the temperature of the fluids you'll be emitting this is useful for making flame effects but we'll go into that later fuel um, pretty much just pumps out fuel if you mix heat with fuel you can create fire which I'll also be going into later and then we have emit fluid color so this is just generally turned off it's not really important unless you want to really select your color through the color palette but I'm not really going to worry with that so to start off, make sure you have your fluid emitter selected just on its own. Don't make sure the um container's not selected. I'm just gonna push W and move it down to the bottom. Go into shaded view. Okay. To um to play back your fluid, your best to set it to probably three hundred frames. That's what I generally like to use. It gives me a uh, good view of how my fluid is going to pan out and as you can see it plays back here and that's pretty much just the first basic fluid you start off with as you can see this is pretty slow it does take its time and it doesn't really give you a real approximation of how fluid it's going to be what it's going to look like so first off I'm going to run you through just being able to play this back at the appropriate frame rate which I think is about 25 frames per second so to do this we go to window play blast, play blast and click that oops sorry windows play blast click this little, um, little icon next to it to bring up the settings for the play blast um, at the moment we want the time range to just be time slider so that's going to go from 0 to 300 or you can define that yourself through start to end I'm just going to keep that as it is and the viewer I'd recommend just using the image viewer which is Maya's default so after we do that just click play blast and as you'll see it's pretty much baking it as it goes along the timeline it's still slow but this is just to um, get all the pictures saved and prepared for the uh, actual playback there we go the play blast just appeared there and now we can see what it looked like at 24 frames per second uh, at the moment it's pretty dull doesn't really have any movement it's kind of just shooting up So after you've done that, just go back to frame one and we're going to
and start emitting some of the um, foiled attributes to make it and give it a more realistic look. So we're going to start off with emit fluid color, just check that and this window will pop up saying in order to emit color into a fluid you must first set the fluid's color method to dynamic grid. This pretty much just means the color is going to be dynamic, it changes so if you have heat or fuel just click set to dynamic and then pick your color in here. I'm just going to do a gray I'll just walk you through how to do some pretty basic smoke. So just click accept and play back now you can see that the fluid color has changed to gray. So that's done. Select the uh, container. It should also select your emitter and in the sidebar go to fluid shape 1 if you're not there already and you should see this big list of tabs. There's lots to go through. So to start off I'm going to increase the resolution. 40 is good but I'd like to see what's happening in a lot more detail. So I'm going to double that to 80. Just means it's going to put like 80 squares horizontally and vertically to detail your fluid. And the size, so just 10, 10, it's just a 10 by 10. 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, I don't, I don't know, whatever method you have set up for measurements in this program. Okay, so after you've played around with that, you've got something you like, something that's optimal for your computer. Go down to contents method, and we have density, velocity, temperature, fuel, and color. I'm going to keep density on dynamic just so, you know, just to keep flow. Same with velocity. Temperature and fuel we're going to keep off because we're not going to be playing around with any ignition in this tutorial. So that's all we really need to do. Just minimize contents. Then open up contents details. Oh, actually, I'll walk you through dynamic simulation first. It lets you set the gravity, the viscosity, the friction, the damping, um, simulation rate, just a whole heap of little things. They're usually fine to leave in detail unless you really want to fine tune and get really get into your flow to achieve um, the effect that you need. At the moment, we don't need that so we're just going to jump straight into contents details when you click that down you have density velocity turbulence temperature fuel and color first off we're going to go into density so we can change the scale so as you can see there it's pretty thin doesn't really have much to it as we change the density scale it increases pretty much just how dense the smoke is uh, and then we have buoyancy, so buoyancy just determines how fast it will float to the top or float to the bottom. So for example, if you have buoyancy at negative 5, it's just going to cave out like that. This can be useful for um, uh, foggy smoke effects, I guess. But for this we want rising smoke, so I'm going to just chuck it somewhere like that and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's fine for me. Um, then we have dissipation. Dissipation just determines the time before the fluid begins to fade away. So as you can see, if we keep playing, this fluid stays here forever. It just keeps filling the container. Um, I'm gonna put dissipation all the way up to one, and it should should make it a little bit better. Look a little bit more like smoke. Have some of its properties. As you can see now, it you know, dissipates into nothing. And diffusion just, yeah. Okay, so that's just playing around with the density, really. Just, you know, changing a bit of the way, the way it reacts against gravity and some of its basic properties. As you can see, it still really doesn't have much movement to it. It's pretty dull. So we can go onto velocity and add swirl. So as you can see now, the swirl has instantly changed it to give it mm, more of a smoke look. So it kind of puffs up into the edge, just as normal smoke would, I guess. Um, pen's looking pretty good for me at the moment. I think I'm just going to leave it there.